everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss project returns and echo returns. We're going to see what the differences are between one and the other. And after, we're going to go through an example in Excel so that you can calculate yourself and see the difference in the results between the two of them. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up if you like it. Let's go. To start with, Let's see what Project Returns is. Project Returns represent the overall financial gains or profits generated by the project without debt. It is a measure of project's profitability and performance based on its own merits. On the other hand, Equity Returns refer to the financial gains or profits earned by the equity investors and are calculated based on the equity invested, which is the total capex minus the debt. You will also notice that project returns is also known as unlevered returns or ungeared returns because there is no leverage in the project as we only assess the project without any debt. And accurate returns is also known as levered returns or geared returns because when you assess accurate returns, most likely there's going to be some sort of debt attached to it. Let's going to go now to the Excel file and see how to calculate each one of them. In this Excel file here, I have two sheets where I'm calculating, in this particular case here, the equity returns. And if I go to the first one, you can see that I'm calculating here the project returns. And the structure is quite simple. First, I have a P&L calculation with the goal to calculate the tax payable. Then, I have a cash flow calculation where I add all the cash from the project and get, finally, to the free cash flows. And after that, I basically calculate the RR. The structure for the equity returns is basically the same, with the exception that I have a debt structure here to calculate the interest and the principal to be repaid to the project. So let's see how that works. Let's go back to our project sheet. And what do we have in here? To get to the tax payable, we have to get first the capex, how much we invest in this project, and I'm assuming here a $20 million investment, then there is no reason for us to calculate the funding because, as I said before, the project returns only consider the project's calculation without any debt. Then we're going to assume a flat revenue of $3 million for every single calendar year. And we're going to assume an operating expense of half a million dollars. As a result, we get that the EBITDA Earnings before interest expense, tax payable, depreciation, and amortization is $2.5 million. The next line, we have interest expense. But because there is no debt into the project returns, we're going to leave this line blank. Then, we're going to calculate the depreciation, which is assumed for this particular case to be a 10-year depreciation schedule in a straight-line method, which gives us $2 for the first 10 years. Next, we're going to calculate the taxable income, which is half a million dollar for the first 10 years, because we have to account for the depreciation, as you can see here. And after that, it's a $2.5 million. Once we have finished the taxable income, we can calculate the tax payable, which for this particular example here, I am assuming a 20% flat tax rate, which is going to give us $100,000 to pay in tax for the first 10 years. And after that, we're going to have half a million dollars in tax to be paid. Let's go to the next section, which is the cash flow. And the goal here is to calculate the free cash flow to the project. And what do we need for that? We need all the cashes from the project. We need to add the capex, then we need the revenue, the operating expenses. We don't have interest and principal repayment because there is no debt, so these lines are blank. Then we have the tax payable, which we already calculated. When we add all these things together, we're going to arrive to the free cash flow to the project. And that's all the money the project is generating without any leverage. And once we have this number, we can calculate the RRR, which is the unlevered RRR or the ungeared RRR, or the project's RR. You can call it whatever you want, which in this case here is 7.83%.
that's it for the project returns. Now we're going to go to the equity returns. And because the equity returns is going to have leverage, we're going to have numbers populating all the yellow background cells in here. So let's go there and see how that works. Here we have the same structure, a bit more complex because of the debt. So we have the PL, then we have the cash flows, and I also have a debt structure in here where I'm calculating how much interest and payment the project will have to pay in order to serve the debt. Let's see how that works now. We have the same things here to get to the tax payable. We're going to have the capex, which is also $20 million. In this case here, we're going to assume a 60% debt and a 40% equity. Therefore, we have to have numbers populating our funding because we're funding the projects with equity and debt. And we're going to have the same numbers for the revenue, $3 million. The same numbers for the operating expenses, which is half a million. And we're going to calculate our EBITDA, which is also $2.5 million. Everything's more or less the same for now, except for the case that we have the funding rules here populated with numbers. Let's go now to the rows that start changing a little bit. We're going to go now to the interest expense in here. And because in this particular case here, the project has that is leverage. So we have to add here the interest expense to calculate our tax payable. If you don't know why we put in here, you can watch a video that I did on tax shield by clicking the links below and you can learn how to reduce your tax payable by adding that to the project. So this is how much interest expense we're going to be paying here, which I calculated down here. You don't need to bother now to understand how I calculated it. The important thing is to know that whenever you have leverage, you're going to have to pay interest. And interest is an operating expense that reduces the taxable income. That's exactly what I have in here. Then I'm going to have the depreciation, which is exactly the same one as for the project returns. And we're going to arrive to the taxable income, which is going to change from that of the project returns because now we have to reduce the interest expense that we paid to serve the debt. And as a result, we're going to have different numbers as we go along in the years. And we're going to finally get to the tax payable, which is also on a 20% rate. Okay, so we know how much tax we're going to pay. That's going to go now to the cash flows. Here we have the cash flow to the equity investor, because we're calculating the equity returns. So all the cash flows should be from the perspective of the equity investors and from his or her perspective, what we have. We have an equity investment of $8 million, which is coming from the funding row up in here. Now we no longer have the $20 million as we have in the project returns, as you can see just in here. Instead, we only have the equity because that's how much money the equity investors had to come up with to fund the project. Next, we're going to have the revenues, then the operating expenses, and here we're going to have to add now the interest expense and the principal repayment because we are paying for, this, for the debt we just took. And what we have here, we have basically this amount of money here being paid as interest expense and a flat amount of $800,000 per year for the principal repayment. Okay? Again, don't bother too much to understand how I calculated it. Just pay attention that these new rows need to be added to the cash flow because this is cash going out of the project because of the debt that was taken. Last, we're going to have the tax payable that we also calculated. And when we add everything together in here, what we have is the free cash flow to the equity investor. Because in this case, we're just assuming that all the free cash flow is going to be paid to the equity investor as dividend. And when you calculate the RR, we get an RR for the equity returns of 10.56%. And when you compare back to the project returns, let's go there to the sheet, we have 7.83% against the 10.56%. And that's the power of leveraging the project. You can increase your IRR as an investor by almost 50%. So 
I think that's it for today. Please subscribe to the channel again, give a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.